Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Continuing Education, Bachelor's Degree Program, Elective Course, Rural Development, BRDE 101 Rural Development, Indian Context, Block 5 Woes and NGOs in Rural Development, Unit 4 Education and NGOs. 4.0 Aims and Objectives. After going through this unit, you will 1 be able to Understand the significance of education in development. Describe the education-related programs and policies of the government. Identify the needs and areas for NGOs' intervention. Contributions of NGOs in the field of education, and Identify some key NGOs and their intervention in the field of education. 4.1 Introduction the meaning, nature and scope of education have witnessed a marked shift with the passage of time. Education narrowly refers to all activities by which a human group transmits to its descendants a body of knowledge and skills and a moral code which enable the group to subsist. In this sense education refers to the transmission to a subsequent generation of those skills needed to perform tasks of daily living, and further passing on the social, cultural, spiritual and philosophical values of the particular community. The wider meaning of education has been recognized in Article LA of UNESCO's 1974 recommendation concerning education for international understanding, cooperation and peace and education relating to human rights and fundamental freedoms. The article states that education implies the entire process of social life by means of which individuals and social groups learn to develop consciously within and for the benefit of, the national and international communities, the whole of their personal capabilities, attitudes, aptitudes and knowledge. Indian educational system over the past few decades has made significant progress. Since independence, India has made impressive progress in terms of growth of educational institutions at different levels, physical access to schooling for children, and diversification of educational programs. Many centrally sponsored schemes for elementary education were streamlined and rationalized. The passage of Right to Education Bill may be viewed as an attempt to universalization of education. But such a big objective can be realized only through the active interventions of non-governmental organizations in the community, household and the state. This unit is an attempt to acquaint learners about the importance and role of education for individual, society and the nation. It will also familiarize learners about the policies and programs of government related to education and contributions of 4.2 major functions of education. Education has a great social importance especially in the modern, complex industrialized societies. In the rural and underprivileged society, its significance is even more. Philosophers of all periods, beginning with ancient stages, devoted to it a great deal of attention. Accordingly, various theories regarding its nature and objective have come into being. Let us now examine some major functions of education in society. 4.2.1 Completion of Socialization Process The main social objective of education is to complete the socialization process. The family gets the child, but the modern underscore family tends to leave much undone in the socialization process. The school and other institutions have come into being in place of family to complete the socialization process. Now, the people feel that it is the school's business to train the whole child even to the extent of teaching him honesty, fair play, consideration for others and a sense of right and wrong. The school devotes much, of its time and energy to the matter such as cooperation, good citizenship, doing one's duty and upholding the law. Directly through textbooks and indirectly through the celebration of programs, patriotic sentiments are intimated and instilled. The nation's past is glorified, its legendary heroes respected, and its military ventures justified. 4.2.2 Transmission of Cultural Heritage All societies maintain themselves, by exploitation of a culture. Culture here refers to a set of beliefs and skills, art, literature, philosophy, religion, music etc. that are not carried through the mechanism of heredity. They must be learned. This social heritage culture, must be transmitted through social organizations. Education has this function of cultural transmission in all societies. 
It is only at the disposal of the school to make serious attempt dot to deal with this area. 4.2.3 Formation of Social Personality Individual must have personality shaped or fashioned in ways that fit into the culture. Education everywhere has the function of the formation of social personality. Education helps in transmitting culture through proper molding of social personality. In this way, it contributes to the integration, to survive and to reproduce themselves. 4.2.4 Reformation of Attitudes Education aims at the reform one nation of wrong attitudes already developed by children. For various reasons the child may have absorbed a host of attitudes, beliefs and disbeliefs, loyalties and prejudices, jealousy and hatred etc. which are to be reformed. It is the function of education to see that unfounded beliefs, illogical prejudices and unreasoned loyalties are removed from the child's mind. Though in this regard the school has its own limitations. It is expected to continue its efforts in reforming the attitudes of the child. 4.2.5 Occupational Placement Education as an instrument of livelihood should help the adolescent for earning his livelihood. Education has become today, nothing more than an instrument of livelihood. It should enable the student to take out his livelihood. Education must prepare the student for future occupational positions. The youth should be enabled to play a productive role in society. Accordingly, emphasis has been placed on vocational training. 4.2.6 Conferring of Status Conferring of status is one of the most important functions of education. The amount of education one has is correlated with his class position. Education is related to one's position in the stratification structure in two ways. 1. An evaluation of one's status is partially decided by what kind of education one has received and 2. Many of the other important criteria of class position such as occupation, income and style of life are partially the result of the type and amount of education one has had. 4.2.7 Encourages the spirit of competition. The school instills cooperative values through civic and patriotic exhortation or advice. Yet the school's main emphasis is upon personal competition. For each subject studied, the child is compared in the companies by percentage of marks or rankings. The teacher admires and praises those who do well and frowns upon those who fail. The school's ranking system serves to prepare for a later ranking system. Many of those who are emotionally disappointed by low ranking in the school are thereby prepared to accept limited achievement in the larger world outside the school. 4.2.8 Other Functions of Education Peter Worsley has mentioned some more functions of education. Some of them are related with the skills that are required by the economy. For example, the number and productive capacity of engineering firms are limited in comparison to the number of engineers produced by education. In planned economy, normally it is planned years in advance to produce a definite number of doctor, engineers, teachers, technicians, and scientists etc. to meet the social and economic needs of the society. Some other functions are as following. Fosters Participant Democracy Education fosters participant democracy. Participant democracy in any large uncomplex society depends on literacy. Literacy allows full participation of the people in democratic processes and effective voting. Literacy as a product of educational system has economic as well as political significance. Education imparts values. The curriculum of the school, its extracurricular activities and the informal relationships amongst students and teachers communicate social skills and values. Through various activities, a school imparts values such as cooperation, audience, fair play etc. This is also done through curriculum related to lessons in history. Education acts as an integrative force. Education acts as an integrative force in society by communicating values that unite different sections of society. The family may fail to provide the child with the essential knowledge of the social skills and values of the wider society. The school or the educational institutions can help the child to learn new skills and learn to interact with people of different social backgrounds. Values and Orientations Values and orientations which are specific to certain occupations, are also provided by education. For example, the medical students are socialized and educated in a particular way in medical college. This may help them to become proper medical practitioners. 
values and orientations relevant to the functioning of rural society may be provided to them by education. Check your progress 1. 1. List out major functions of education. 4.3 Significance of education for individual, society and nation. We have already discussed major functions of education. Now, we will acquaint you about its significance for individual society and the nation. 4.3.1 Importance of education for individual and society. Education, beyond its conventional boundaries, forms the very essence of all our actions. Our action is the outcome of our knowledge and learning either through instructions or through observation and assimilation. In the process of learning our mind always process new information or try to analyze the similarities as well as the tiny nuances within the context. In such a situation mind definitely holds the potential to learn more. However, we stop ourselves from expanding the horizons of our knowledge with self-doubt or other social, emotional or economic constraints. While most of us feel that education is a necessity, we tend to use it as a tool for reaching a specific target or personal mark, after which there is no further need to seek greater education. Nonetheless, the importance of education in society is indispensable and coherent, what is why society and knowledge cannot be ever separated into two distinct entities. Let us find out more about the role of education in society and how it affects our lives. 4.3.2 Purpose of Education in Society Education serves some important purpose in the society. Some of them are following. Self-empowerment Good education empowers you, by making you strong enough to look after yourself in any situation. It keeps you aware of your surrounding as well as the rules and regulations of the society. Only knowledge can enable you to question authority for its negligence or discrepancies. Then you can avail your rights as a citizen and D seek improvement in the functioning of governance and economy. Only an aware citizen can judge the policies of its government and in a position as a whole, people can bring about development only when they know where improvement is necessary for the betterment of mankind. Education helps you to understand yourself better, it helps you to realize your potential and qualities as a human being. It helps you to acquire more damn knowledge which further so that you may be able to sharpen your skills. Financial Stability and Dignity of Life Another importance of education is that it helps you in acquiring required academic qualifications so that you can suitable employment at a later stage. A decent employment would be combined with hard-earned remuneration or salary through which you can look after your personal expenses. While you earn for yourself, you gradually begin to realize the true worth of money added how and it is to earn it. You realize the significance of saving for unforeseeable contingencies. You feel empowered because there is a new sense of worth that develops within you and feel the need to be independent and free from any further financial support. You take pride in the fact that you are earning for yourself and are not obligated to anyone. Growth in personal aspiration there also comes a phase when the amount you are earning presently will seem inadequate because your aspirations and expectations from yourself would have grown considerably. After this, you want to change job to have a higher profile. However, for it you need to be prepared. A promotion can occur in two given situations. You have the necessary higher academic qualification or a college degree which allows you a safe passage, or you have amassed enough practical experience which allows you to be a suitable candidate for the employment you seek. On the job efficiency When faced with the option of choosing between a highly qualified candidate and a not-so-educated candidate, the employers will most probably go in for the qualified person. The reason being that, a qualified candidate will not require much investment of the employer's time and money. The organization need not teach him or her tricks of the trade or the various ways of functioning and performing the tasks of the workplace. On the contrary, a novice-slash-amateur applicant would need to be taught everything from scratch, which many employers are usually not willing to do. The same applies for people who seek higher education and get advanced diplomas while working. These people are continuously imp Helps plan ahead. Those who have amassed enough education, steer the path of development and progress for their country. It is these individuals who go ahead and become teachers, scientists, 
inventors, welfare activists, soldiers, and politicians who work together to form the very backbone of the society. Without this pool of intellect, the economic and social framework would crumble and fall, paving its way for anarchy, degradation, and violence. If this intricate balance of growth is maintained, there will be a continuous rise and progress in all quarters of life, whether that be personal growth, or development of the nation as an entity. This progress has a very important role to play for the coming generations, which will reap the benefits of our hard work. At the same time, the negative impact of our actions shall have its collateral damage on the coming generation as well. Therefore, we must be exceptionally prudent about the decisions we make and the actions we take in the present. Job Seeker vs. Job Provider A time will come, when you will no longer feel the need to be working as someone's mere employee. You would like to have control over your own life and income. This is possible when you become a self-employed individual and would like to watch your own ideas taking realistic form. You will prefer being the one, offering job opportunities to others and aid in providing income to them. At this stage of entrepreneurship, you may utilize your own expertise as well as that of other trained and skilled associates. As a team, you will find your business or venture expanding and yielding good results. You may even gain the confidence and insight, which will help you diversify and spread your expertise into other business arenas, which were previously unknown to you, or you were unsure about. This ability comes with experience and knowledge amassed over the years. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. Education and studying regularly, gives people of all age groups something substantial and challenging to do. It helps them think and use their idle hours, doing something productive and worthwhile. Education need not be purely academic and may include reading for leisure or as a passion for literature, philosophy, art, politics, economics, or even scientific research. There is no limit to all that you can learn yourself. It is possible only if you take the interest to learn and grow as an individual. However, those who treat knowledge as trash, eventually find themselves getting absorbed with L1 lots of violence, and jealousy against those who are better off than themselves. Such people may attune towards drug addiction, unnecessary rebellion, crime, and plain inactivity. Such people lack the self-esteem. 4.3.3 Education in National Development Education has contributed significantly in the development of developing a country. It has provided several qualities directly associated with the national development. A country with higher level of education keeps the society under control. It further contributes to the nation. Development. Education is something that not only affects a society but also an individual and their behaviors. Education helps to shape people in the workforce that help to make our future national development even better. Education being the most important part of a person's life contributes in high three development. To conclude education contributes significantly in the development of a country by providing smarter people in the workforce. Therefore, for overall national development education must be a crucial component in every citizen's life. 4.4 Education, Major Governmental Initiatives Various initiatives have been undertaken in the education system in providing wider and better educational opportunities to all. Some of them have been listed under school education, higher education and technical education, school education and vocational education, district primary education project and presently Sarva Shiksha Bhiyan, centrally. Sponsored scheme for attaining the target of providing elementary education to all with the help of international funding agencies. The focus has been to create educational opportunities to children in the age group 5 to 14 years in their habitations by involving community and locally available teachers. Midday Meal Scheme, again a centrally funded scheme to give nutritional support to primary school children. Kendriya Vidyalaya project to provide school education to children of government employees with transferable liability throughout the country. Navodhya Vidyalayas, 
another centrally sponsored initiative as Navodhya Vidyalaya scheme to promote the quality of secondary education especially to the deserving children in rural areas. Other schemes and programs The FOIL allowing centrally sponsored schemes are in operation at present. 1. Improvement in science education in school. 2. Operation Blackboard. 3. Minimum levels of learning. 4. Vocationalization of education at senior secondary stage. V. National Institute of Open Schooling. Y. Promotion of educational technology by MHRD in collaboration with Department of Electronics. Along with these there are several other initiatives at the government sector to maximize educational opportunities at the school education levels by formal and non-formal modes. Some of the recent programs are as following. 1. Sarvasriksha Abhiyan, SSA 2, Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidhyalaya, 2012-13-3, National Program for Education of Girls at Elementary Level, Npgal 4, Midday Meal Scheme. MDMS 5, Mahila Samakhya. 6, Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Bhiyan, RMSA 7, Scheme for Setting Up of 6000 Model Schools at Block Level as Benchmark of Excellence. 8, Scheme for Construction and Running of Girls Hostel for Secondary and Higher Secondary Schools. 9, Scheme Zero F Vocationalization of Secondary Education at Plus 2 Level. 10, Scheme of ICET at school. 11. Inclusive education for the disabled at secondary school. LADES 12. Quality improvement in school. 13. Strengthening of teachers therapying institutions. 14. Adult education and skill development scheme. 15. Scheme for providing a quality education in Madarsas. Scheme 16. National Means Come Merit Scholarship Scheme. 17. Scheme for Infrastructure Development in Minority Institutions, IDMI. 18. National Scheme for Incentive to the Girl Child for Secondary Education. 19. Appointment of Language Teachers. 20. Setting up of new polytechnics and strengthening of existing polytechnics. 21. Pre-Matrix Scholarship Scheme. 22. A Clavia Model Residential School. IRS Higher and Technical Education Some of the initiatives taken in higher and technical education are as follows. I. Creation of universities and college in the country. 2. Creation of specialized universities like agricultural universities. 3. Setting up of coordinating, examining and accrediting agencies. 4. Creation of advanced centers of studies in universities. V. Granting of autonomy of colleges. Y. Establishment of institutes of national importance in technology, management and other professional areas. Check your progress too. 1. Why education is important for individuals. 2. Describe the contributions of education in national development. 4.5 NGOs and education. The passage of the Right to Education Bill in 2009 marked a major milestone in India's history. However, there are several stumbling blocks in achieving the goals of universal education in the country. It is believed that it would require massive mobilization on an unprecedented scale and seamless collaboration between the government, public, businesses and social organizations to enroll every eligible child in school. This makes the role of social non-profit organizations even more critical as they seek to supplement, complement or substitute the formal education system in the country and reach out to the excluded, underprivileged and challenged sections of society. The RTE is a step in the right direction as it aims to address several of these deficiencies. However, Universalization of education cannot be achieved unless there is intervention at community, household as well as school level and it is only NGOs which are equipped to work at all these levels. An international report, The Role and Impact of NGOs in Capacity Development From Replacing the State to Reinvigorating Education by Inga Ullberg, UNESCO and ILE, states that as development actors, 
NGOs have become the main service providers in countries the government is unable to fulfill its traditional role. In the education sector, many NGOs have moved beyond the gap-filling initiatives to step into innovation and capacity building. You are listening to this audiobook on audio learning GNU 4.5.1 Types of NGO and Their Concern. According to World Bundle, NGOs have been classified into four categories. They are Types of NGOs 1. Charitable NGOs, Service Oriented NGOs 2. Participatory NGOs and Class Organization, Empowering NGOs 3. Community Based Organization Community Development Oriented Organization 4. International NGOs NGOs which are working in more than one country Look at the screen for table content 4.5.2 Need of NGOs in the field of education In many third world countries, grassroots NGOs are taking an important role in social development NGOs are significant in their ability to reach out to marginalized sections in remote areas where government welfare schemes have not been able to reach. NGOs are close to the field-level realities and also have the potential to advocate the marginalized people's voice at the national and the international level, seeking to create a more egalitarian social order. At the same time, international donor agencies have found that NGOs are sometimes more efficient in implementing various developmental programs. In India, the failure of the state is seen particularly in the field of basic education. There is an urgent need to assure education for all as India accounts for one in four of all children out of school worldwide, Oxfam 2000, and half of the population in the country is still illiterate. In order to assess the NGO's contribution to the field of education, it is essential to understand what is meant by basic education. At the landmark international meeting, World Conference on Education for All held in Jomate, Thailand 1990, basic education was defined as an indispensable passport to life that will enable people to choose what they do, to share in building of the collective future and to continue learning. Basic education is essential. If inequality among the genders, within and between the countries, is to be challenged, UNESCO 1996. The objectives underlined in the JC, greater than Mete declaration assume special significance in the Indian context. Though the right to treat compulsory primary education till age 14 is a directive principle of state policy, Article 45, of the Indian Constitution. Universal primary education is yet to become a reality in the country. The problems in India are multifarious in nature. Not only is there an absence of adequate infrastructure but social, economic and cultural barriers as well. Here the NGOs who work in close association with the communities can play a crucial role in imparting effective education to children especially in the areas where the government schools are not able to government and NGOs. NGOs are working to fill the vacuum created by the governmental inaction in the SOCAL fields such as education, health etc. Government also recognizes that it is not possible to cover the entire country only through governmental agencies. The government found it useful to allot the work to the NGOs mainly in two ways. 1. NGOs are able to reach out to the needy and the other is th. At NGOs can show good examples. Another important aspect in the NGO government relationship is that NGOs are bridging the government development schemes with the middle dot villages. For example, Creda is forming women's self help groups under the Ministry of Rural Development Scheme and also trying to make villages aware of various government schemes meant for the development of poor communities in the project areas. The educational field has been known as playing a major role in shaping contemporary society mainly because it allows to conceptualize people's surroundings as well as their interactions with those surroundings. Non-governmental organizations are often set up to plug in the gaps left by the government. India as a nation still has a large population that is vulnerable, in terms of health, education, jobs and opportunities etc. This has also seen a large proliferation of NGOs. By some estimates, India has 3.3 million NGOs or one NGO for every 400 individuals. 
This number is comparatively large. A lot of NGOs set up in India are either dormant or fraudulent, used for a wide range of illegal activities such tax evasion and misappropriation of government funds. Regardless, there are underscore still a large number of credible NGOs that do genuine work for the people, providing important services, from education to health to disaster management to pet care. These NGOs play a positive role in virtually every sector of the economy. In India, there are NGOs doing brilliant work in different fields. In the education underscore sector, for example, some of the most prominent NGOs would include Pratham, Research on Educational Outcomes, famous for the annual State of Education Report, Teach for India, Direct Intervention in Low-Income Classrooms, and Akshaya Patra. Involved with the Midday Meal Scheme Others such as Goonch are involved with other problems having the poor. Goonch specially focuses on clothing and believes that merely by reusing the existing clothing in the nation, one important characteristic of poverty can be eliminated. Moreover, a substantial number of NGOs are involved with one of the most important problems facing the poor, lack of quality skills and employment top or one tunities. These NGOs focus on skill development and livelihood creation by creating entrepreneurial opportunities for them. In the long term, NGOs will continue to play a larger role in nation building. Increasing prosperity and increased focus on corporate social responsibility spending will definitely help in increasing the focus on the disadvantaged sections of society. Those NGOs that are able to adopt best practices and bring about the maximum transparency through auditing and reporting will be best placed to receive a larger chunk of funds in the coming years. NGOs such as Akshaya Patra have grown enormously in scale by consistently delivering results year after year. CSR spending will benefit only the most credible organizations and allow them to grow in scale. This is a good trend. Larger and more accountable NGOs will be able to deliver more effectively and efficiently, making best use of resources. 4.6 Some important NGO and their concern 1. Pratham Pratham is the largest non-governmental organization working to provide quality education to underprivileged children of India. Pratham was established in 1994 to provide preschool education to the Chikku Vanrain in the slums of Mumbai city. Since then, the organization has grown both in scope and geographical coverage. Today, it reaches out to millions of children living in both rural and urban areas through a range of interventions. Its programs are designed to ensure that 1. Enrollment in schools increases 2. Learning in schools and communities increases 3. The education net reaches children who are unable to attend school Four. Models are replicated and scaled up to serve large numbers of children to achieve a large-scale impact. Pratham firmly believes in working with the government to bring about large-scale change and therefore its programs are aimed at supplementing rather than replacing governmental efforts. It has signed memorandums of understanding with eight state governments for its flagship program Read India and is working in close collaboration with the municipal corporations in several cities such as Mumbai and Delhi. Teach for India, Teach for India, TFI, is an Indian non-profit organization, which is a part of the Teach for All global movement. Through its fellowship program, TFI recruits qualified Indian college graduates and working professionals to serve as full-time teachers in low-income schools for two years. Fellows work to bridge the educational gaps that their students face, in the hopes of putting their students on a fundamentally different life path. Through the Teaching as Leadership Framework, Teach for India staff provides training and support to fellows so that they can employ innovative teaching strategies to maximize their effectiveness in the classroom. After two years of the fellowship, the fellows become a part of an alumni movement. The aim of this movement is for the alumni to work from inside and outside the educational system to affect the long-term one changes necessary to realize educational opportunity for all. Teach for India's aim is to prove that no child's demographics should determine their future.
TFI's belief is that the end of education inequity is the freedom for all children to have the opportunity to reach their potential, and the day that that children reach their potential is the day that India reaches HLJR potential. The organization is committed to finding, developing and supporting India's brightest, most promising leaders for this to happen. Teach for India emphasizes on spreading the idea of quality education for all children across all walks of life through its alumni. TFI currently has 730 fellows, of whom 250 were recruited in 2012, and 480 were recruited in 2013. The fellows work across 209 schools in five cities of India. Make a difference, MAD along with education partner, Cambridge University Press, Make a Difference or MAD has initiated a unique project, the English project to educate children from poor homes, orphanages and street shelters with English. Currently, some 1,200 volunteers are working hard to teach 4,000 children in some of the major cities of India including Mangalore, Chennai, Bangalore, Mysore, Delhi, Dehradun, Kolkata, Vellore, etc. Winner of the prestigious Ashoka Staples Youth Social Entrepreneur Competition in the year 2008 and also a Nobel Laureate of the Karamveer Puruskar awarded by iCongo, Global Fellow of Youth Action Net and Quad Fellow 2010. MAD also runs a placements project that aims to place underprivileged children on the same platform with the children from regular homes. 4. Barefoot College India an entire campus that runs on solar power. Yes, that's Barefoot College that was originally started by two friends Megraj and Sanjit Bankaroy and who wanted to establish college for the rural population of India and was established in 1972. Today, the organization trains local community people into teachers, specialized professionals in other fields and has initiated many educational efforts for children. The organization has also been ranked as the second best educational NGO in the year 2013 by the Global Journal. 5. CRY, Child Rights and You or CRY is an NGO in India working for children and their rights. CRY has undertaken a lot of initiatives to improve the conditions of underprivileged children and one of them is the Chhote Kadam Pragati Ki or, a literacy drive that has reached out to more than 35,000 children in 10 states of India. Mission Education is another very popular campaign from CRY to make sure that education is every child's right and that proper education reaches to more children in every new academic year. 4.7 Let US Sum Up The unit described major functions of education and its importance for individuals, society and nation. Other major points discussed in the unit were importance of NGOs for education. Some NGOs and their concern were also discussed in this unit. Thank you, we will see you in the next video.